A compound is defined as two or more atoms that are held together in what we say is a fixed ratio. Let me use some examples to explain what I mean when I say fixed ratio. Let's start with water. Water is a compound that we're all familiar with, and water is formed by combining two hydrogen atoms with one oxygen atom. In order for us to have a compound of water, we must have this fixed ratio of two hydrogen to one oxygen. Any other combination of hydrogen and oxygen, anything that's not two to one, results in a compound that is not water. So this fixed ratio concept just simply means that there is only one particular combination of atoms that results in the desired molecule. So again, any other ratio of hydrogen and oxygen gives us something totally different. For example, hydrogen peroxide, which is a relatively common household chemical you might have in your bathroom, or in your medicine cabinet, hydrogen peroxide is a compound that is made by combining two hydrogen with two oxygen. So here we have a different ratio of hydrogen to ox oxygen, which results in a totally different compound. Within a compound, the atoms are held together by bonds. So bonds are what holds the atoms together in a compound. Bonding is dictated or controlled by each atom's valence electrons. We've looked at valence electrons for a while now. We've defined the valence electrons. These are the electrons that are in the highest energy level or they are in the outermost energy level for an atom. We've also looked at valence electrons in terms of ionization more recently. We know when we were uh, from looking at the ionization concept, we know that all atoms want to ultimately achieve a what we call a noble gas electron configuration. This idea of atoms wanting to achieve a noble gas electron configuration, this is what we were working on when we were predicting um, how atoms would gain or lose electrons to form ions. So we were looking at, for any given atom, we were looking at its electron configuration, we were identifying the nearest noble gas for that particular atom, and figuring out how many electrons that atom had to gain or lose in order to reach an electron configuration that matched up with that nearest noble gas. So we already know from stuff that we've learned in the past, we already know that some atoms achieve their noble gas electron configuration by ionizing. So all atoms want an electron configuration that matches a noble gas and they will get it. They will get that electron configuration by either ionizing, which we've already seen, or another option for them is bonding. They can also get a noble gas configuration by bonding. Ionizing, let's just put a definition down here. This is what we've seen before. This is where they are gaining or losing electrons to form ions, cations, or anions. And the other option, which we haven't looked at yet, bonding, is actually when they are sharing electrons with other atoms. And again, the sharing of electrons with other atoms is ultimately what results in holding atoms together to form these compounds in these fixed ratios. So in the next few videos, we're going to study the concept of bonding and atoms sharing electrons with each other as an alternative way of achieving their noble gas configurations.